Hey everyone, so in my video that I made with my super hydrophobic knife where I cut the water drop in half, I had a few disturbing comments. And these comments suggested that the super hydrophobic knife would make the perfect murder weapon because it wouldn't be able to keep any of the blood on it and so you would never be able to trace any blood back to the murder weapon itself. So today I'm going to be testing that theory and seeing if we actually get blood on a super hydrophobic knife, will it beat up and repel enough so that when I look at it under a microscope I won't be able to find any red blood cells whatsoever. Alright, so I have here some real blood. This is beef's blood. So I'm going to be trying the beef's blood first and then make sure I see the same results with real human blood too. So I'll prick my finger and use my own blood and see what happens as well. Okay, so first let's try just dipping a regular knife in the blood. So you can see it coats it really easily. But now let's try our super hydrophobic knife. Look at that. So you can see the difference here. So I want to try, I was using this beef's blood here, but I looked under the microscope and the beef's blood doesn't even look like there are any red blood cells that are whole in there anymore. It looks like they've just kind of been broken apart and you can't even tell what's in there. It's kind of just this mixture of proteins in there now. So I want to try something a little more realistic and see if we get the same results. So I'm just going to prick my finger and use my own blood and see if we can actually see a difference. So I'll put it on the hydrophobic knife and see if it actually shows up under the microscope as well. Put it on my glass slide here. So here's what the blood looks like under the microscope. So you can see all the red blood cells there. Zoom in a little more. Look at that, <laughs> so cool. You can see them all stacked up, kind of like pennies stacked together. So they're gonna start to clump together because they're starting to coagulate. So many of them and a tiny little drop of blood. So you can see how they stack up like that. Look, you can totally even see the shape of the red blood cell. They're round with an indent in the middle. So that slight movement that you see, that's actually Brownian motion. So you can see the random motion of it. That's the water molecules random motion bumping the red blood cells. Okay, let's dip the hydrophobic knife in the blood. Okay, let's check it under the microscope and see if we can see any blood on it. Okay, let's look at it under here and see if we can see the blood. Okay, so you can actually see little splotches of blood on here. So forget about seeing red blood cells, we can actually see giant splotches of blood. Look at that, busted. So I went ahead and sprayed different surfaces to make them hydrophobic and tested them with water and sure enough with water they're hydrophobic. But with blood they weren't hydrophobic as much. In fact, the blood would be a little bit hydrophobic but right when you dropped it on it would just spread on the surface and stick there. I thought that for sure the super hydrophobic knife was going to be able to repel the blood and we wouldn't see anything on it. I was planning on being able to spot even just individual cells on there, but I could actually see giant clumps of blood. So the super hydrophobic knife didn't work at all to keep the blood off of it. So to make this super hydrophobic knife, I used Neverwet. 
So the repellency of Neverwet is actually due to a topological structure it forms on there of these tiny nano and micro scale particles. And these tiny little particles on there actually make the water so it can't spread out on the surface. So it makes the, water, it makes the surface hydrophobic. But what's interesting is that it doesn't work for blood. So to show you how my hydrophobic knife should react, I've sprayed this piece of paper with the hydrophobic material also. So here's how normal water acts on the paper. You can see that it just beads up, rolls away. Put the blood on there. So what's interesting is that the blood actually sticks to this a little bit. Now this actually shows you how smart our blood actually is. So our blood is designed to start coagulation as soon as it meets anything foreign. So if you cut your finger or something, it's supposed to start coagulating so that you don't just lose a lot of blood. It starts forming its own closure to that cut so that you don't lose blood too much. Now a side effect to that is that basically anything that is not the inside of your veins and arteries makes your blood start to coagulate together. And it looks like even when you put it on super hydrophobic surfaces, it starts to coagulate and even bind to that surface. Not just bind and clump together, but it actually binds to that surface itself. This is actually a big problem in surgeries or whenever you have to put an implant into the body, it can cause tiny little coagulation points to form and thrombosis to occur so you get tiny little embolisms in the body. So the medical industry has been working on this for a long time and they're trying to come up with different ways where you can put something foreign in the body and the blood doesn't know it's foreign. It basically just treats it like a part of the body. But you can see that it's really hard to do. Even when you have something that repels different liquids, it doesn't repel the blood. Because like I said, the blood is specifically designed to know when there's something different than what it's used to being around, and so it starts coagulating. What's interesting is the beef's blood was still able to stick to the super hydrophobic surface, even though it looked like there weren't really any red blood cells in there anymore. It was kind of just everything had been lysed open and it was just kind of this protein mixture. But that was still able to stick to the super hydrophobic surface. Granted, it wasn't sticking as well as when I used my own blood for it. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.